DK News Hour where we always update you with the latest trending topics. One of our trending topics now is a natural disaster which has hit Western Canada and British Columbia. What is a heat dome? Heat wave, heat dome, heat stroke, jet stream, global warming are all hot topics today. What are these? How did they all come together? This video is all about that. Between June 25th, 2021 and June 30th, about 4 8 to 6 people suddenly lost their lives due to a heat wave in British Columbia, Canada's westernmost province between the Rocky Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. This place otherwise has a very beautiful weather that so many houses did not even need an air conditioner. Today, the air conditioners and the fans are out of stock. Some people even left their homes to stay in hotels. Unfortunately, something very bad happened to many of those who were affected. So, what is a heat wave? If the temperature in your area exceeds the normal temperature by 5 degrees centigrade or 9 degrees Fahrenheit, then it is hot but still not a heat wave. If it remains like this continuously for more than two to three days, then becomes a heat wave. The heat wave of British Columbia stayed for a week, which is really a lot. Sometimes it can last even longer. Normally, when the days are hot, the nights help cool it down. But in cities, the asphalt in the roads and the concrete in the buildings store heat during day and release it at night, preventing the environment from naturally cooling. This is called the urban heat island effect. This makes the heat wave worse in the cities. What happens to us during a heat wave? We our warm-blooded animals and our body temperature is maintained at 37 degrees centigrade or 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. If the temperature around increases to 38 degrees or higher for several hours, our body becomes tired due to heat exhaustion. At even higher temperatures like a sustained 40 plus degree centigrade for few hours, our body gets affected. The symptoms include heat exhaustion, cramps, and when it affects the brain, you'll feel dizzy, uncoordinated, and weak, and sometimes even cause death. Does not sound pleasant, does it? How does that happen? When the heat is high, our body tries to regulate the temperature by sweating. When the sweat evaporates, our body gets cooled, but if the weather is humid, the sweat will not evaporate fast enough. So no ev evaporation, no cooling. So our body sweats even more. This causes loss of useful minerals and electrolytes in our body, causing dehydration. When the water loss peaks, blood becomes thicker. The heart finds it difficult to pump the blood and the kidneys cannot clean them well. The oxygen levels in the body drop. So the heart tries to pump even faster to supply more oxygen to our body. This heats up the body even more and the spiral continues till the temperature regulation fails. This causes death. But it is not just us humans who are affected due to the heat wave. Heat wave also destroys agriculture, infrastructure and ecosystems. The heat wave inhibits plant growth and they die. The dry plants could then catch fire and further aggravate the heat wave situation. When everyone turns on their air conditioner, it causes a heavy load on the electricity supply. This may cause accidents due to power overload and sometimes cause a major power failure. We may be able to take care of our pets, but many animals, birds and even marine creatures out there are defenseless against the heat waves. So far, we saw what is a heat wave and what happens to us during a heat wave. But what causes a heat wave first? Here, we need to understand jet stream, heat dome and the general effects of global warming. Let's start with what is a jet stream. It is a stream of strong 
winds that blow from west to east around the globe. The direction of the jet stream is always from the west to east as earth rotates from west to east. What causes the jet stream? Jet stream is caused due to temperature differences around the globe. The temperature differences are caused because the sun heats different parts of the globe differently. So, what happens if the temperature is different? We will have cold air in cold regions and hot air in hot regions. When this hot air and cold air meet, the hot air rises and the cold air tries to fill the space left by it. This movement causes air current. These air currents are up there in the sky, high in the atmosphere where the aeroplanes fly. That part of the atmosphere is called the troposphere. The air current moves at high speeds of around 160 km per hour and can sometimes go up to 400 km per hour. Normal air speed on the ground is 10 to 19 km per hour. So the jet stream is really, really, really fast. Now, I think I know where the name Jet comes from. But what is the effect of a jet stream? In the northern hemisphere, the area north of the jet stream has cold weather and south of the jet stream has hot weather. In winter, the jet stream is further south towards the equator and as summer comes, the jet stream moves northwards in the direction of the poles. So the area south of the jet stream has warm conditions. Weather conditions in the path of the jet stream moves away with the jet stream. However, weather conditions little away from the jet stream like this red portion remain stationary and warm and the potential to form a heat dome. So, what is a heat dome? In the area south of the jet stream, here is a stagnant, hot, humid air spanning over a very large area. This may stay in a place for a long period of time. This is a high pressure area that locks the area under it and seals in the heat like a trap. You go inside but never come out. This high pressure area gets anchored at a position and causes to form a dome of hot air in the atmosphere. The warmer it is, it physically expands the dome. Due to the high pressure, the winds aloft come in, they go down the dome and sink to the ground. The sinking air particles hit each other causing friction warming up further. The high pressure also does not allow any cloud to form. Since the sky is clear, the sun rays directly heats the air in the dome. Again, due to high pressure within the dome, the winds are very light, so it feels very hot too. The jet stream on the north acts like a wall, deflecting any kind of weather changes for a longer period of time. And the weather here may remain hot for several days or weeks. Eventually, the dome will break. The jet stream will move further northwards giving more space here to move or jet stream will push the dome off into the ocean. But by that time, the damage is already done. Now, what is the role of global warming in all these? It is not a direct impact but an indirect one. Due to global warming, the earth has already warmed up by 1 degree in the last 100 years. The summers are already a little longer and the winters shorter. So what that means is, due to long summers, there will be more occurrences of heat waves and the heat waves may last longer. And due to increasing temperature, the temperature will be more extreme. The big countries in the world have promised to remove carbon emissions by 2060. 2060 means they will continue to plunder our earth for another 40 years? That is too little too late. Now on to the last topic. What can you or I do to counter the heat wave? Avoid the direct sun as much as possible and stay indoors. No football. Even if you have to go out, wear light colored, loose fitting clothes. Have a white hat or carry an umbrella. And apply sunscreen. Drink lots of water. Don't wait to be thirsty. Just sip along. 
Don't do any heavy work or exercises. Check on your elderly neighbors or any other vulnerable people. If you go out, carry and provide water and food to needy people out on the streets. Keep some water and food outside for the birds and street animals. Provide in and water for any plants you can and do everything you can to reduce global warming. Now we learn that when the temperature is 5 degrees above normal continuously for more than 2 to 3 days it's a heat wave. Heat wave can do terrible things to you and could even cause death. We also learn that due to a phenomena called heat dome hot air is trapped by high pressure fronts and it gets pushed back to the ground and it heats up even more. Heat wave caused by heat domes recently took many lives in British Columbia. This is very sad. We also saw that global warming aggravates the heat wave. While heat domes are not in our control, we should do whatever we can to at least prevent global warming. If you feel all this is making sense and you would like to learn more about topics, please subscribe and I'll notify you when I add my next video. Hope you like this video. Then please hit the subscribe button and then I will notify you when I add my next video. Ta-ta! Bye-bye! See you!